Pastor David Hilton, who will be with us Tuesday and Wednesday night, my friend from uh, um, the Dayton Christian Center. And I, I, I tell you, when I heard this man speak, I, I thought to myself, you need to hear him. And I don't say that for a lot for Sunday mornings, but I'm going to say this again. You need to open your ears, get out a notepad, get ready to listen to this man. All right? One more time. Give him a hand. Come on. Come on. Let's give the Lord a hand. Let's give the Lord a hand. Come on, y'all. Come on. Let's give him the highest praise. Today is Palm Sunday. Come on. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And I, I thought it would be fitting today. Uh, I, got, I guess I got a little feedback back here or amp on. Um, but um, I thought it would be fitting today that when Jesus came in, uh, everybody started laying down palm branches. Uh, there was celebration, but there was ultimately no trust. There was celebration. This is it. Oh, the mighty conqueror is in the room. We're about to take it all back. Rome, y'all get ready. We're about to go. There was celebration and no trust. And so I was just wondering today if how well we trust the Lord. How well we trust the Lord. Because it, church can be like Pavlov's theory. Pavlov's theory was ring the bell, the dog salivates. In other words, he trained his, his uh, dogs that when the bell rang, he would feed them. And so he, he would ring the bell, and then all of a sudden, uh, their dog, the dogs would start salivating because they knew it was dinner time. And so one day, he, as, as he trained them, he rang the bell, and he didn't feed them. And they were just... <laughs> And, and I love getting excited about worship. I love getting excited about Sundays. I think that seeing each other, sharing in community, doing all the things. But I want to know, do you, come on, trust him? Ooh, thank you so much. Come on, give him a big hand. Thank you so much. And so uh, I am, uh, I, I, my family is from Rogers, Arkansas. We've been pastoring up there for uh, seven years um, and then I did 20 years at one church and served my pastor there, uh, Pastor Tim Brooks. I served there. So I've been in ministry uh, al almost 30 years. And so um, I want to jump right in it. I don't know if y'all have a couple of the slides. Do y'all have a, a couple of the slides before I get into the verse? Did y'all get those? Um, no? All right. Well, uh, I also run a, a nonprofit ministry called Be The One Ministries. And we do a lot with young people, training them in the marketplace, the mission field, and ministry. And so um, I know that we're running out tonight. I'll try, try to have those slides back. Come back tonight because it's going to be a whole lot better. Uh, uh, today is just, you know, it's, I wanted to keep it level five because I knew it was Sunday. Uh, uh, but, but tonight we're going to go all the way there. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Get out your Bible. Get out your phone. Come on, do some work. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do it all for you. Come on, come on. Thank God they put it on the screen. All right. Proverbs chapter three, verse five and six. Trust the Lord with all of your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your uh, path straight or straight your path. Here's the thing: is that it is easy to say, "I love you." It's harder to control your actions, moods, emotions, and prove I love you. It's easy to say, God, I trust you. But this verse, I think, helps us define, are we really walking in trust with the Lord? Or do we just say it, but when really we're worried about our finances, worried about our job, worried about our kids, worried about uh, the prodigals that have gone away, worrying about uh, the, the economy, worrying about America, worrying about, and now before we know it, we say we trust God, but we're scared, fe full of fear, jacked up, and we hide it by saying, I ain't scared of nothing, except for you're scared of everything. You know, uh, and if we're not careful... Just because you act tough doesn't mean that there isn't 
concern and fear. I can't even talk to someone because I'm scared they're going to make fun of me. It's going to trigger my past. It's going to trigger my rejection. I never hung out with my dad, never hung out with my mom. So I can't speak in church, so I just sit in the back row. The whole time I'm talking about I trust God. Come on. See, here's what I want you to know today is trusting God is built on a personal relationship and is practiced in uncomfortable moments. You will know if you trust God when it's uncomfortable, not when it's comfortable. Amen. Come on, y'all help me now. Amen. This verse is extremely simple, but it's extremely profound. Do you know that the most simple things are, are, are some of the hardest things to understand? Spend less than you make. Everybody will be like, yeah, buddy, that's a good one. Yep, spend less than you make while we got $5,000 on every credit card. Come on. Don't say everything that you think or feel. Come on, come on listen. It's simple. Don't say everything. Just because you feel intense don't mean you have to talk intense. The, I don't know. It's like... It's like somewhere we're either in two camps. We're all love or all supernatural. But the Bible says power, love, self-control. It's like we're missing the self-control component. Come on, help me. Uncomfortable moments. When those moments when there are unmet expectations, when you thought it was going to happen this way, when you prayed for a miracle, when you believed for your wife, when you believed for your husband, when you believed real big and what you believed did not happen, come on somebody, the way you thought it was going to happen, you can be in attendance but your heart be far from God. You can be coming because you grew up in church, but if you're not careful, if your heart isn't present, you're just learning morality. You're not, you're not getting it revelation. You're not getting impartation. So we're going to break this down. Look at this. Trust the Lord. We all trust in something. We all trust in something right now. You, you're trusting in something. The Bible is to both encourage us and instruct us not just to help us think logically, but come on, if we're not careful, listen, when we think about trusting the Lord, you can't trust anybody you don't know. You can't trust anybody you don't know. Oh, yeah, I trust the Lord. No, 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 no. Trusting the Lord means there are three things that happen for trust to happen. You have to have a relationship. Come on, if your best day is on Sunday, I'm going to use all my Christian vernacular on Sunday. Okay, got, got, my, got my phone out. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless God, brother, sister. But on Monday, that son of a... Come on. Relationship. Well, God, I got a lot of work to do. Got a lot of mouths to feed. Got a lot of bills to pay. So I'm going to give you Sunday, but I ain't giving you any other time. So you trust you. You trust you but you don't trust him because it's about forming, come on, someone, a relationship, believing that my time with God is actually not a hindrance, but it's actually a fuel that begins to help me think wiser, see things, but prophetically begin to know where I should be, what I should do. Come on, does that make sense? And so, well, I tried to pray, Pastor. I talk and he doesn't. I start getting up there, and I'm like, I don't even know what to do. Hey, God. But here's, here's what you have to know. God speaks in a still, small voice. And the Bible tells us that his word doesn't come back void. And it says that my sheep know my voice. And so you'll know it. God will speak to you. and You'll just know. You'll see. You'll hear. There's ways that God begins to speak to us. And we, God doesn't speak to everybody the same way. You're not going to hear Mufasa, Simba. You know what I'm saying? You must go to General Dollar now. Now, Lord, now. The four things that you've wanted to buy is on clearance. Thank you, God. 
It's like, it's like all of a sudden, we don't want to trust God, so I'm not, going, I'm not going to build a relationship with him. I'm going to be preached at, and I'll do that, but I'm not going to build a relationship. What about this? Dependence. Dependence, meaning I depend, come on, on him. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7 says, Blessed is the man who trusts the Lord. Come on, who's, the, his trust is the Lord. Are we becoming dependent on the Lord or are we becoming dependent on government, dependent on our job, dependent on our pastor, dependent on our mate, dependent on our, and I'm not saying that there aren't places that we lean, but you're going to have to lean first, come on, on the Lord. Becoming submissive. In other words, surrendering yourself and submitting what you want to do to what he wants to do. That's trust the Lord. If you think, come on, God's going to always agree with every thought that you have and do everything that you want. Come on, how many, can we be honest? How many of you have had prayers that you prayed that now three or four years later, you're like, thank God you didn't answer that prayer. God, if I'd have married her. I'm going to stop. I'm going on. We trust in so many things. We're so jerked up. If Fox News says it, if Newsmax says it, if CNN's, <laughs> and, and we're like, how do we navigate being wise? But then beginning to trust the Lord, and it's not passive. I don't want anybody in our church to be passive. God didn't want you to be passive. He said, go, be salt, be light. Be, there's never a time when he said, hey, sit, do nothing, be passive. It doesn't matter. The only time he tells us to wait is when he has, wants to download something into our life. He's not asking us not to move. He's asking us to trust him. Are we the people that can go like Esther into the king? Are we the people that will murder someone and then walk back like Moses? Are we the people, because God's going to ask you to do and minister and go to the very places that you want to leave. I trust the Lord. God's been putting it on my heart to reconnect with my daughter. So I've been thinking about it five or six times this month. And so, dang it. Lord, I do not want to start that conversation. I know how it's going to go. I don't like it. I don't want it. I'm, I'm just waiting for her to come and repent. But you know what? I know I need to pick up the phone. Do we trust the Lord? It says, with all your heart. Come on, James chapter 1, verse 5 through 8 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God who generally gives and begins to walk through. Listen, we got so many people confused, tossed by the winds of the way, and the reason they're confused is because they have what they want to do, and then they're trying to be led by what God wants to do. You can't do it your way and his way. All your heart, not some of your heart. We got this idea in our culture that's, oh, well, you know what? Uh, you know what? Listen, oh, uh, you know, whatever your heart says, just do you. And the Bible says you can't even trust your heart. That's why you give your heart. That's why the Bible says give all of your heart to the Lord. Don't, don't have other idols. Don't have other things. Don't have other lovers. Don't have other things in your heart. I want to do this, this. All right, so I got church, and I got the Dallas Cowboys, and I got, um, I got all of these things that I like. And, I, and at different times, I don't know which one's first. Give all of your heart. Listen to this. Do not lean. Do not lean. Don't lean on your own understanding. Don't do it. Can I borrow you for a second? Come on up here. All right, can you just put your hands out like this toward me? All right, just right, right here. Here's the problem with some of our marriages. Here's the problem with some of our friendships. You wonder why you're having stress and problems in your marriage is because you're leaning on her or you're leaning on him to make you happy. You're leaning on the pastor. You're leaning on the government. You're leaning on Trump. You're leaning on whoever you want to try to keep this thing afloat. And God's like, yo, when did I stop being God? Thank you. Strong man. Come on. And here's the deal. The worst thing is this. Look at this. When they fall, 
Because every human is going to. They're not made to stand in the place of God. So when they drop you and you fall, then I'm offended. They were never supposed to carry you. That doesn't mean that they're not an aid. That doesn't mean they're not called. That doesn't mean that God hadn't appointed them. But they are not. Come on, help me. Your marriage would be a whole lot better if you stop giving all of what you think and start going to the Lord. Give him what you think first. Let him begin to talk to you and then go talk to your spouse. Y'all should have helped me on that. Thank you for the golf clap. I feel like we're on the golf course. Thank you. Good. That was so weak, y'all. Come on, come on. If you don't do it, do it. Don't, don't lean on love. If I can just find, if I can just find love. Listen to every song on the radio. Come on. I grew up in the 80s. At least they had good music in the 80s. Come on. Don't stop. Huh? 70s? 70s, y'all were out of your minds. Now it's just like, at least in the 80s, we were sub suggestive. Now, there's no suggestion. We know exactly what you're talking about. You're like painting the picture. <laughs> Don't lean on your job. Don't lean on your money. Lean on the power of God. Lean on him. You ever sat on an old rickety fence that couldn't hold you up, but you thought it would? <laughs> well, that ground, it's unforgiving. We got way too many people offended in church texting me back you're too much <laughs> nobody's told you yet you're 47 years old 52 years old you're too much okay best friends are different than they are in high school and junior high you're not gonna have let ladies let me holler at you a little bit you're not gonna have one bestie that you tell everything and you're sleeping you're married you got three kids you ain't doing that no more stop You're going to have about seven girls that you like, and they're all going to provide different things for you. Some are going to be your laugh girls, and you're going to be like, oh, my God, we're going to go kick it at Walmart or whatever. You know, like, like, we're going to giggle and laugh. Then you've got other people that are going to mentor you, and they're three or four years older than you, and they're going to give parenting. And they're going to, but you're not going to have a best friend sleepover at 42 years old. So stop crying about you don't have a friend. God gave you a bunch of friends. They all provide something different, just like you provide something different. Lean on God. Say amen. amen. I just set some of you free. You don't have to leave this church like you did the last church. I just set you free. Uh, you're not ready for me. I'm telling you. I may not ride a horse, but I'm telling you. I come like thunder. Listen. It says acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. How, how sad would it be for Pastor Jerry to be here in the service and then see you two days later and pass you at uh, the donut shop and not even acknowledge you? Acknowledge you. Now, he, I mean, you may have come two or three times and he may not know your name yet. Go ahead. I mean, but to not be like, hey, I, 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 how are, or when you acknowledge him for him not to, but we got people living their life no longer, I'm almost done. Uh, 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 we, 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 we got people, listen, listen, we got people not even acknowledging the Lord. Don't even know where he's moving. Don't even know what he's doing. Totally have missed. Don't even see what God's doing. You're frustrated and mad at everything and God's positioning you. You took it as a moment of stress, but God's building your integrity. God's building your character. God's building your per, uh, perseverance. Can I tell you something? You don't, you're not born with perseverance. You're not born with the character. You're not born with integrity. You develop it in uncomfortable moments. And I'm telling you that can we be a church that acknowledges him, that sees him, 
awesome. Oh, man, that, that truck, I can't believe they ran that stop sign. I just stopped. Thank you, Lord. Can we acknowledge the Lord or are we so blind? Come on. If you're going to do it, do it. We don't acknowledge God. You've been praying for your teenager for all year long, and they finally come and sit down and start crying and say, I want to change, and not one time did you fall on your knees and beg God, but you've been mad at God for a year. Your wife finally decides to say, I want to go to church. You've been a borderline Pharisee. You leave your Bible open and push it toward her every day. She hadn't wanted to go. And now she says, can I go with you this morning? Are we acknowledging God in anything that's happening? Or are we so frustrated that our life has inconvenience and that it's not comfortable that we're mad people all the time? Come on. It doesn't matter how many prayers God answers. We're just mad about the next thing that's not right. You got a job, but you hate everybody at your job. And don't get it twisted. They hate you too. <laughs> the way you talk about them, they talk about you. This woman right here, this man right here, they, they're out of their mind. And they go to that church down the road. Come on. Can we acknowledge him? Make your, your path straight. Listen, if we will lean not on ourselves, if we will trust the Lord with all of our heart, if we will give him our heart, if we will begin, come on, listen, to acknowledge him, then we will not be confused when all of society is confused. It's not hard to understand. Pharaoh couldn't see it. His mind was blind. Don't, don't, don't start picking it in protest. The reality is that the, the enemy has covered the eyes. People can't even see. I mean, it ain't that hard to know that a man is a man and a woman is a woman. It ain't that hard to know. You just look down. Now, I don't, I don't have a degree, you know, in, in, in like four or five PhDs. But how have you gotten to that much school and you don't understand that? And so have you, it's ridiculous for you to argue what you see with a blind person. Instead, you got to describe what you see. There's a difference. If you want them to have the revelation of what you see, you're going to have to be in moments where you can describe the goodness of God. But if we don't even trust him, we'll never describe it. Come on, does this, does this make sense? So I'm going to wrap all this up. I've got like five, to five, ten minutes left. And the reason that I'm talking about this is because we see an incredible moment where Jesus shows up walking on the water. I'm going to give you some context here. So this is important. Trust. Everybody say trust. 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 Jesus was in a moment where John the Baptist was just beheaded. Okay? He leaves to go on a boat to process with his disciples. He gets there, and there's a huge crowd there. He has a lot of compassion on them. He begins to heal them. Heal them, heal the sick, begin to teach, preach, does this deal. All of a sudden, 5,000 people show up, right? 5,000 men. Not, 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 not just judges. It's actually like 10,000, but, but it was like 5,000 men. Not women and children weren't counted, okay? And then Jesus does the miraculous and all of these people are fed. I, I want to give you one verse. I don't even have it up there, so you guys don't freak out. It was all on me. But, and in the evening, the disciples came to him, Jesus, and said, uh, this is uh, Matthew 14, sorry, Matthew 14, 15. 
This place is desolate. Everybody say desolate. And the hour's already late. Send the crowds away that they may go into the village and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said to them, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. Be careful what you call desolate. Can we talk? America is not desolate. Your marriage is not desolate. Your children are not desolate. Your finances are not desolate. Come on, hear what I'm saying. The men of God that had traveled with Jesus, that had the greatest perception of what God could do, told Jesus, let's send everybody away because nothing good can happen here. And Jesus was like, <laughs> uh, feed them. There's no food. It's desolate. There's no economy. There's no growth. There's no vegetation. There's nothing here. If there was something here, we would be attached to it. The only thing that's here is you. <laughs> yep. And it's enough. You hear what I'm saying? Then, after everyone gets fed, and then, I mean, can you imagine being the disciples? Can you imagine being one of Pastor Jerry's right-hand people as he tells the whole community, hey, God, God's going to heal you, God's going to set you free, and it starts happening, and then he says, we're going to feed everybody who came, and everybody gets fed, and you're just like, it's been a lot of hard work, this is crazy, but this is awesome. You're like chest bumping, high-fiving. And immediately, here's what happens. Let's look at this. Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 and 23. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. And while he dismissed the crowds, and after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. Can I tell you, every leader, anytime you see a miraculous moment, anytime God uses you greatly, anytime there's been an event, your next posture is prayer. Do not think that you can get up here on stage and just lead and pour out. Because porn will, porn will be the thing that catches you. Depression will be the thing that catches you. Insecurity, brokenness, whatever. You cannot pour out and not fill up. Jesus modeled when God uses you greatly, you have to then go posture yourself. When you have a moment with a Bible study or a woman on the phone or whatever and you poured out and she heard you and she's crying and you're crying and you're talking to a man at the feed store or the whatever and all of a sudden he's getting it, your next thing is to get in your truck and go. Because here's the deal, you're about three stoplights away from blowing it, getting out of your truck, acting like a fool and people going. And you're like, why was that guy so ready? Because this guy was different because he was full. And this guy had spent it all. And Jesus knew, I need to pray. I need to fill up. I need to, I need to allow the Holy Spirit. I need to hear God's voice. I need to be led, not by my own. Come on, I need to fill up. And Jesus was 100% God. Come on, listen. Look at this. And when evening came, he went there alone. But the boat was um, by this time a long way off from the land, beaten by the waves and the wind against him. In the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. But the disciples saw him walking and were terrified, said it's a ghost. Isn't that funny? Y'all didn't think it was funny. <laughs> and they cried in fear. Fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, take heart, it is I, don't be afraid. Peter said, Lord, if it's you, Command me to come on the water. So he came. So Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind and wave, he became afraid and began to sink and said, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand, took a hold of him and said, why did you doubt? Oh, you a little faith. I want to give you three thoughts that I think will help you in your trust with the Lord. I'm going to give you three cautions, three lies that will play in your head in your journey with the Lord. The first is this. The enemy will try to convince you that God is distant. 
Well, God and Pastor Jerry have a great relationship. God and the worship pastor have a great relationship. God and the elders have a great relationship. God and so and so, but he's too distant. And here are the disciples in the middle of the water wondering why is all of this happening <laughs> now? And some of you have seen God do some great things in your life. And maybe you're frustrated because the great things that he did, you're not in a season where you're seeing that like you should. But I need you to know that God knows where you're at. And he has not left you. He's not forsaken you. Come on, listen. He is not distant. Say, he's not distant. Here's the second one. God's not difficult. God's not difficult to understand. I mean, and you would think that the disciples would be like, okay, we started this ministry. We're going to impact people. We've had healing, buffets. Everybody's excited. And now immediately Jesus is like, go get in the boat. What? Go get in the boat right now. I want you to leave right now. But this is not the time to leave. Jesus, you don't know anything about trending. We're, we're, we're growing. The ministry's happening. What we said is going to, this is it, baby. Get in the boat right now and leave. I'll tell the crowd to go. You leave. Why was he doing that? See, here's the thing is, there's a lot of times that we are confused by what God is trying to do and the enemy comes in and he tries to distort God, what God said and what God's doing. But God, Jesus was actually preparing and protecting the disciples. And he was like, you know what? Until you are filled with the Holy Spirit, until you have this moment, you can't handle this pressure. And you can't handle, hey, so how do I get a part of this? What do I do? Hey, how do you? How do you? And then all of a sudden, your ego gets puffed up and whatever. And so I'm just telling you, Jesus sent them away because he knew the moment. And so what is God doing in your life where you feel like, I'm praying, I'm trying this new job, I'm trying to get this done. And you feel like he is so difficult, but God is not, come on, difficult at all. He knows what's happening. He knows what you're doing. He knows where you're at. Don't be afraid of what you see. God isn't difficult. He's cultivating something in your life. Here's the third one. The enemy will try to tell you that God is delayed. I mean, if God called me to do all these things that he called me to do, the, the prophecy on my life, the, the moment, the prayer, the, the salvation, like if all of this was supposed to happen the way it was supposed to, why am I in a boat being attacked by waves? Does he know that I want a child? Does he know how long I've been praying for my son to get off drugs? Does he know how long I've been waiting to buy a house? Does he know? And I need you to know right now, Peter gets out, walks on the water, and he's already had the battle. God's been distant. And then he comes. And then he says, come on the water. And all of a sudden he begins to sink and it's confused. You, you said come, but it was hard. And why, did, why do you think Jesus did that? Because Jesus knew that Peter prophetically told him, you're going to be the rock. But I'm not going to have you be the rock because you're perfect. I'm going to have you be the rock because you trust me. And so the wind and the waves moment where he began to sink was just a precursor of, of God teaching Peter Humility. Like, you're going to do some incredible things, but you're never going to do them without me. And I believe this moment and the rooster crowing and all that began to prepare Peter for dependence. See, I need you. It's not about how great I am. It's about how good you are. And the last thing that we are talking about here is that he is not delayed. Peter could have thought, you saw me going down. You saw me going down. Why didn't you just, why didn't you be there before? You knew I was looking at the winds and the waves. You knew I was sinking. Why didn't you just reach out and get me before I begin to sink? Fear, I didn't have to come up with the feelings of fear before you acted. And Jesus is like, yes, you did. Because you needed to come face to face with you cannot answer your own problems. I am here. 
I am present. I am not delayed. I see your struggle. I see your fear. And I am moving and I'm asking you to trust me. To lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him. There are moments that are going to be scary in your life. And you can't always be thinking God left you. There are moments that absolutely we believe in the Holy Spirit and the supernatural and God intervening and all of those things. But there will be moments. I had, our two daughters were born and they had to go into the NICU, NICU. One of them had a valve issue with their heart. And we had to trust God. Three or four years ago, we got into a wreck. And they did not even know if I was going to make it. I had a daughter that had a brain hemorrhage. You got to trust God. And this doesn't mean that I'm not anointed and appointed and called and whatever, but you are going to navigate through this life, and I need you to lean not on your own understanding. And so come on, all over this place, come on, let's begin to pray. We're going to wrap this up. Come on, if you've been maybe struggling with your trust, you've been confused, maybe the enemy has lied to you and you have thought... God is too distant, He is too difficult, and He is delaying. I am here and I was sent today to tell you to trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. Come on, if you're here today and this is ministering to you, like you feel like this is exactly where you're at, on the count of three, I want you to just raise your hand right where you're at. Come on, one, two, three, come on. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for every hand. Father, I thank you right now that you are moving. We give up our anger. We give up our offense. We give up our jealousy. We give up our control. Father, we thank you that you are present, that you are good, that you are not too busy for us, that we are not insignificant. We trust you. We trust you. Come on, I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit right here, right now. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you that you are moving. We trust you. In Jesus' name. And everybody said... ago I I started teaching learning the principle first and then I started teaching it to trust God and to love people and some people took that wrong but what happened in my life pastor is that I had so many people that trusted me like age you know you lean everybody was leaning back on me and then when I fell when I quit when I gave up when I resigned and then I it shattered the community I said, God, I never want people to trust me again. I want you to love me. Because if you love me, love covers a multitude of sins. You can have confidence in me because of my ability to pastor, drive, ride, or whatever I do. You know, I took Pastor Joseph and worked with him on riding scooters. And yesterday, I'm so proud of him riding with us. But there's, there's a situation that I go through every time we get on a scooter that this is something I really love doing. I sure don't want you to get hurt because you thought, well, I just want to ride with the pastor or with other brothers. And Brian, you understand it. When you're out there, you really feel for everybody riding with you that, man, God, protect them, please. So I've lived my life the last 20 years encouraging and not just, you know, I don't say that, but I believe it. And thank you, Pastor, for preaching on it because I've never really preached the message out of Proverbs 3, used it a lot during funerals. But I teach people, trust God, love people. Because if they fail, love covers a multitude of sins, failures, mistakes, and missteps. So I thank you for loving me. And I encourage you to love one another. Amen. The scripture says that's how how we fulfill the law, is that we love one another. And 
never teach it. And I think we've brought up generations of people teaching them to trust each other. We're not made for that. When you get in a car with me, the first thing you're going to do is look for a seatbelt. Amen? Thank you. With me, you will. As a matter of fact, I will encourage you to put that seatbelt on because it's going to be a fun ride. Amen? Today, I want you to uh, to give not only toward back toward the ministry of this house, but also toward Pastor Stephen. So uh, in front of you is an envelope. I want you to reach for it. Everybody look, it, 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 fake me off. Act like you're reaching. Thank you. Amen. If you're giving on your phone, as the servant leaders go by, just hold your phone up. I'm giving home holywild.net slash give. If you're watching, amen. Those, if you, it's funny. If you're here, of course you're here. If you're watching, of course you're watching. Uh, please take an opportunity to give toward holywild.net slash give. Uh, Pastor Stephen has how many kids? Four. I looked at Sage this morning, and the first thing I said to him was, your daddy's got to feed you, clothe you, He's got to look. It's going to cost probably a million bucks before you get out of college. He's going to need help. I looked at his poor daughter, Lucy, here. She needs money for a pair of jeans. Bless her heart. I look, I look I, I, in shoes. I asked her, did somebody buy them shoes for her? And she just, yeah, we've got to help them. As our servant leaders come up, brief announcements. Just very briefly, baptism on the April the 9th. If you want to be baptized, please contact the office. Pastor Joseph, you got something to say about today after church? They know about it. Softball at one. Uh, bring your glove. The ball will be. Uh, they'll have. They'll have a ball. Amen. Tonight we're eating right after church. Seven o'clock here. Then we're gonna eat. It's about celebrating. It's about coming together. Man, I enjoyed it. You enjoy this message today? Can, can I tell you one of the, my, my, I love this statement, and, and I think you may just threw it in there and, and uh, went on, but you said, the disciples said to Jesus, hey, we're trending. And that is such a popular thing now. When we start trending, when we start getting traction, and everybody's watching. And at every, if you watch Jesus, almost every time he started to get real popular, they wanted to make him basis of king on bread instead of the cross. He, was trend, he backs away. I love that, man. Pastor Stephen, would you and Sage and Lucy head toward the back and folk will meet you? Her real name's Tia. You can call her Lucy. She answers anything if it has uh, anything to do with food or a new pair of jeans. All right. As we give today, we're believing God for. Come on, say it. Checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor and success to the kingdom. What time tonight? Seven o'clock. Amen. at seven. And, and again, we're going to be eating out. You say, well, I'm not going to be hungry. We'd love for you to hang out in fellowship. I'm going to encourage the North Campus and UK need to be here tonight. Amen. I'm sure Pastor David Hilton will be bringing some of his church tonight. I got other pastors that are going to be coming in tonight, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. So be here. Don't just uh, stay home and watch online. Listen, the online is for folk that are, are unable to come. Or they live out of state. Or they consider 300 miles too far to drive to church. That's what online's for. It's not just to stay home and be a bedside Baptist. All right? You need to be in the house of the Lord. Now, we want to pray for our sister Hicks this morning. Sister Hicks fell and broke her hip. You know, she's of age. They helped build this church back 50, 60 years ago. You know, the Higgs family. So I, I love them, all of them. So she's in surgery this morning. So that's that's three or four families that are normally sitting over here in this area. So let's pray for her. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift her up before you. You touch Mama Hicks. She's been such a blessing to this house. She smiles. and Lord, I've, I've observed her, her life. She's literally shrunk as I've watched her grow in life. You've just kind of pulled her back down with gravity. But now we're asking, Lord, do you touch that hip? You give the surgeons the, the strategic idea to see her well, that she would have length 
of life and purpose in days. We bless her and her family in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand with me. God bless you guys. You can be dismissed, and we will see you tonight at 7 o'clock. Invite somebody to come.